I wanted to share very quickly in a short story, you know, how I ended up coming here to this spot among friends devoted to the same cause. I came from India at the age of four with not a word of English uh, in, my, in my knowledge bank. Grew up in New Jersey and then West Virginia. I came as, up as a child in the early 1970s when my mother, for the first time in America, then lived with a reality where she could take off the face veil that she had been forced to wear as a girl in India, because our family was so conservative. She earned money in America, and she started her own business. She knew a reality that was the opportunity that was available that was America. Nothing ever offered to the generations of women in our family. But on another level, we were seeing this extremism that was being imported to America from the government of Saudi Arabia first. And that really marked my growing up, like it did so many of ours. But like so many Muslims, I just stayed quiet. I saw my family members being lost to the extremist ideology, but I stayed quiet. I became a journalist, but I never wrote about Islam. And then 9-11 happened. I got on a plane to Pakistan and ended up in Karachi where I rented a house to write a book <coughs> as I was doing my reporting. And it was 15 years ago then, in January, that my colleague from the Wall Street Journal came through the front door of my house to come to Karachi for an interview. And outside my house on Zamzama Boulevard, we were named for this holy water, right, that's supposed to spring, flow eternally. Danny left in a taxi. I waved goodbye to him. You know those flocks of parrots that sometimes come over houses? They were singing overhead. The bright Karachi sun was kissing our faces and I never saw Danny again. He never returned from this interview from which he was kidnapped. And it was in that moment, January 23rd, 2002, that I became an activist. You know, that's when I started lacing up my <coughs> caterpillar boots bought at a bazaar in Karachi, and I called them my jihadi boots to try to fight for first Danny's life. And now, 15 years later, I laced up my shoes and we walked into Toronto for this meeting of the Muslim Reform Movement because everything we stand for is to stop that violence that claimed my friend's life, you know, that claimed it in the name of Islam. What hurt me so badly was that when we discovered the truth of what had happened to Danny, it was a young man from London who had never met a police officer like you that had prevented his radicalization to the extremist <coughs> interpretation of Islam. There were young men in Karachi who had never met somebody like you, you know, who would show them that Islam could be about love and opportunity and never had the opportunity to sit with somebody as wise as Khalil, who could say, why go down this dark path? And so now, the truth is that I learned that when they slaughtered Danny, they then washed the blood from the floor in this compound out in the outskirts of Karachi, and then they laid their janamas, their prayer rug, to do their namaz, right? This is the crisis that we face, and this is, this is what we stand up against, right? This is for love, for friendship, for compassion, for kindness. And so I just want to thank all of you, because I know without knowing you that you take risks, 
that you have arguments with your friends for us, that you fight in your communities, you try to create new policies, you are changing the world. And so thank you for standing with us as we try to do the same for everyone. Thank you.